And welcome. Boy, do I have an amazing episode for you today. Let's say amazingly abundant. It is abundant because we are talking about money. And I am so excited for you to listen in. I have a guest on the show today. Her name is Liz Carroll. She is a lifelong student and teacher of making mindful money moves. Okay. She originally believed that she was quote unquote bad with money. And she did the work to rewrite her money story. She is going to talk about how she worked to drop limiting beliefs about how a woman can earn and manage money to set herself up for financial success in a way she would commit to and follow. It works for her, Warriors. Listen in to hear about her inspiring story. Also, she is now in her encore career. Okay, She helps other warriors just like us experience calm confidence with their finances. How good does that sound? Calm confidence with finances. Yes, please. By unpacking and shifting their own money story. She has the unique ability to shed light onto darkness around money, making complex personal finance issues simple. She created the Mindful Money Method, a financial wellness course and coaching program that utilizes a holistic approach to math, mindset, and soul-guided desires. It's us, Warriors. I'm so excited to have her on the show. She is a financial coach from Ramsey Solutions, a certified life coach school from the school that I graduated from, the life coach school, and a 200 RYT yoga and meditation instructor from Puma Yoga College. She and her husband live on the Oregon coast. Their adult children visit regularly, and now we get the benefit of her being on the Love Your Life show. Let's go. Hi, this is the Love Your Life Show with Susie Pettit, Certified Life and Wellness Coach. Join Susie as she helps you with your wellness and mindset so you can live a life you love. Let's go, Warriors. And welcome to the Love Your Life Show, Liz. I am so thrilled to have you here. Well, thank you for having me, Susie. I'm thrilled to be here. And thank you so much. Yay. Well, I just I did an intro and I just said that this is full of abundance and and (laughs) so much excitement with money and and touched on how we were both trained at the same amazing life coach school, um, which I really love that connection, not only because I just have an affinity to all our graduates, but also because we're taught that the things we think in our head are not necessarily facts. They are thoughts. And that, according to you and me, shows up in money. So I would I would love to dive in a little bit about that. Like in your opinion, why is it important to pay attention to some of the thoughts that we have about money? Well, for sure, because it creates our feelings. And we all know money is emotional. We all have mm. feelings about money. And we have feelings about our ability to manage money, our ability to earn money. And all of those feelings come from those thoughts. And then, of course, they drive the action. So mm. that, that creates the results. So women come to me if they're not happy with their current financial results. That's when they come to me is like, my results aren't working. So then mm. we all right, then how are you thinking? How are you feeling? How, what actions are you taking for your finances? And we have to dig in and really uncover what is that money mindset or the mm. story that they are telling themselves. Because as you know, those sentences or thoughts in their mind, if they're on repeat mm. continuously, those become our beliefs. And not all of those beliefs we created. Some of them have been created from other people. <laughs> And given to us uh, this wonderful inheritance gift. That yeah, I want to here you give go. You my <laughs> wonderful money mindset. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, yeah, I absolutely. I want to get into some of those stories, but first, can, then, can you tell us a little about how have you been doing money mindset and money work since you were twelve, or how did you get into sort of doing this yourself? No, I was <laughs> the I was the one who wasn't good with money. You know, mm. my parents labeled us early on that I was the one that was the 
artistic or creative. And um, <laughs> my sister was the one that was good with math and money and sports. Mm. And so I was the volunteer. I was the one who was going to have great birthday parties for my kids, that kind of good handwriting, but I wasn't the one that was good with money. So, oh, so that's, so I just want to stop right there and just point out to listeners how those are thoughts. Like those are thoughts when we hear it, like think back to us in our childhood, like what were you told? Were you the creative one? Were you the one that's not good at money? Were you those aren't facts, but when we start thinking them, we think them over and over and they become beliefs. Um, yeah. So how did yeah. that show up for you? Thinking that you're not good with money. <laughs> well, I wasn't good with money. I, distinctly, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I know. I distinctly remember being, this is back in the old days. They would, they probably would never do this today, but um, in college in the eighties, mm -hmm. I was at the limited and my credit card was maxed and the woman cut my credit card up. Oh my gosh. Right there. <laughs> so I was not good with money. Yeah. Um, and, and here's the thing. So my mom rescued me, you know, my mom paid off my credit cards. And then, then when I got engaged with my husband, not long after, you know, after college, my husband paid off any debt I had so that we, I, you know, that time. So I just kept showing up that I wasn't good with money. Yeah. Um, and as we do, <laughs> and your mom's rescuing you because she's thinking the thought Liz isn't good with money. So what we can't expect Liz to be good with money because of, right. And it wasn't a lot of money that I was but back then, you know, it was like maybe a thousand dollars. Goodness. But, right. Yeah. Yeah. So Anyway, I, I kept showing up not good with money. And then I was early in my marriage because we, I got married at 22, right? Mm -hmm. So um, my husband has always been very, at that time, he was good with money. Mm -hmm. And then he was the major breadwinner in our relationship. And he one time said to me in a, the heat of an argument, I think, he said, he who makes the gold makes the rules. <laughs> and uh -huh. I went, oh, hell no. <laughs> you know You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. He would never say that today. I want you right. to know. I have yes. the best husband. I've been married 33 years. You know, but I We say um, things when we're angry. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. And also, he was young and he heard that from someone else. Yeah. Someone else gave him that information. It wasn't something he created, you know. Yeah. He had heard it somewhere else. So needless to say, I then decided, all right, I'm going to make a little more money. So yeah. that's when I kind of got my act together. And then I did start making more money. And my mom offered me this wonderful thought that she said, now don't make more money than your husband. That's not going to be good for your relationship. And so that had me not... That had me putting the regulator, I think, on my career. And I believed that for a long time that I shouldn't make any more money than my husband. So wow. Less than him. Or earn less than him. Yeah. That comes up a lot. This idea that it will be, it, I mean, that's, uh, you had your mother specifically saying it, but I also, you know, we hear it in society too. Like men like to make more and be careful that, yeah. Well, and here's the thing. It was true for her and her relationship mm. with my father. Right. Because my mother was the my mother was a badass glass ceiling breaker, you know, mm. in the seventies, and um, it was true for her and her, mm -hmm. her relationship. It just wasn't true for me and mine. And so when I finally dropped that and stepped into my earning power, mm. and my believe me, my husband was not sad about it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, I love it. I, you know, I just want to, you touched on a couple of things right there. Like just, if certainly how the thoughts we have about money and the beliefs that we have about money can come from, you know, our mother, the media, our programmings or early days that, you know, I'm not good with money or women can't earn more than men. Um, but then also the part there from parenting because I, I know sometimes people, when they look at the messages, they, you know, if they're thinking right now, a listener's thinking like, well, what messages did I have in my brain about money? They can immediately sort of shut down that line of thinking, by thinking they're criticizing their parents or something. But I love your mother's, your example with your mother, because it's showing like she's trying to share that from a place out of compassion for her. She's like, this wouldn't have worked in my marriage. So let me share it with you. So it's like, based on my life experiences, women should not earn more than men, which is why we do a lot as parents. You know, we give some <laughs> guidance to our kids, whether it's money or whether it's, you know, based on my experience, you should play violin, um, <laughs> that sort of thing. 
Uh, yes. So it's it's not coming from a place of malintent, yet we still get to, as adults in our adult brain, sort of pull those thoughts out of our head and look at which ones are serving us and which ones are not. Absolutely. That's the thing. Mm. It's like, I didn't know that I could examine it. Mm. Like, it wasn't until I stepped into my power and went, wait a second, I don't want to believe this. Mm. Yeah. That I was able to really show up what what she trained me to do. I mean, mm. honestly, my mom was amazing and she did come yeah. from love with that advice. So thank you for pointing that out. And um, my mother's been passed for many years, but mm. my mom, you know, she raised us girls to be really independent women mm. and in our marriage. Does that make sense? Right. Like that? Yes. And she, she did a good job. I mean, my mm. sister, very successful. And guess what? I'm good with money and my sister is, has great handwriting. So we can be both. (laughs) (laughs) Both can exist people. (laughs) Yeah, That's the other part that, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, uh, radio where they ask him what kind of pie he wants. And he's like, of both. I love love that because it's not either or all the time, you know, it's like, I, I can have good handwriting and be good with money. Yes. and I, oh, I, yeah. I, I cautious my, I caution myself now on labeling my kids in any way. Does that, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's what it did to me. Mm-hmm. So. The I am statement is very big. And I am very aware of that. Like what I'm saying to them, like, you're the quiet one. You're the one that's good at money. You're the whatever. It's like, who am I to tell them who they are? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. very helpful. Um, so what are some of the most common stories or thoughts that you hear women having with money a sort of the money well, mindset the the biggest one is that no one ever taught me about money mm. and so that is if you feel that try it on and feel it in your body that that's kind of that that has you feeling um scared or or unsure you know yeah insecure. um the other one is money is hard mm. or i don't know what to do the those are, it's a lot of indecision, a lot mm. of definitely powerless. Does that like, it has you showing up powerless. Yeah. Where, uh, the other thing is, is it has you avoiding it. Like, I don't understand it. That's another mm. thing. That, I don't understand it. I don't know about it. No one yeah. That money it. is hard. If you think money is hard, you're going to feel sort of confused or scared or yeah. And then to think that you're going to go figure out stocks and bonds or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um Yeah. Well, and I had never heard that before. Like no one's ever taught me about money. I mean, that is a very, that could make me feel victimy, which I don't like to feel victimy in my life, but it also could bring me some shame. Like, like I, if I'm thinking like, oh, I don't know anything about money. No one ever taught me about money. And, and, you know, then, you know, when we feel shame, we get secret. So we don't talk about it. And it's just sort of that hidden place. Well, and that's exactly where my um, women are coming from. They're Mm. sitting in in avoidance. So when they're in avoidance, I have two different kinds of women that that come to me. One are women that are earning really, doing really well in their career and want to expand it. And they want to make sure they've set themselves up correctly. Mm. I have other women that come to me that are sitting in avoidance. Mm. And those women that are sitting in avoidance are looking to someone like me who is not selling them anything. I'm not selling Mm -hmm. them any financial products or, you know, I am Mm -hmm. a financial coach. I'm also a life coach and I'm a yoga meditation teacher. So I I I have like a different approach where it's more like, come sit next to me. Let's open your accounts together. Let's figure this out so that we can get organized. Mm. Let's not sit in avoidance anymore. You are totally capable of doing Mm. this. My program is math. It mm. is mindset and it's soul. Like what's your values and mm. desire from your, your internal knowing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. And I think I'd like to focus more on the avoidance part because I think that's what I see a lot of. And I, it's interesting because before um, recording this podcast, I recently saw a st- statistic that said that we find it easier to talk about sex or the intimate details of our relationship. Like when we get together with girlfriends, we're more likely to say like, oh, I haven't had sex in a month or, oh my God, you know, this is whatever we want to talk about. Then we do about money. 
like that we have a harder time saying like, hey, I'm making 88,000 this year, or I'm making 188,000 or I'm, you know, in debt with my credit card. Um, yeah, why do you think that is? And how is that impacting us? Well, I still have girlfriends that don't like that I talk about money. And they, they, <laughs> I'm like, I'm a money coach. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about it. Yeah, and um, and that's and that's okay. You know what I mean? Like that. Mm -hmm. I will. I do want to step up there and show that you can talk about money, and this mm. is something that's really important because if we really do want to bridge those pay gaps or things that are mm -hmm. out there, we have to talk about it. We have mm -hmm. to know. It has, you have to talk to your cube mate and say, all right, I'm making this much. What are you making? You know, mm -hmm. or, or the, my friend over at XYZ company just got a promotion and, and celebrate it because it's not that comparison in a, in a negative way. It's mm -hmm. like a, yeah, let's go, let's go mm -hmm. to that next level and not sit in the avoidance, either in the discussion or or the action of, mm. of earning more because so many of us are under earning too. That's the other. Okay. Part. So how do you help someone who's in avoidance? Maybe they're thinking the thoughts that, you know, they're in a marriage and they don't talk to their spouse about their marriage, or maybe they have the thought that my husband does everything with money and they, they want to change that. They want to feel more calm and confident around money and know a little bit more about money. Um, how would they even start to take action there? Well, one is to learn a little, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and know that there is nothing in wealth building, in my mind, in the way, I mean, I've built wealth, right? So mm -hmm. I was able to retire from my corporate career early and all these, uh, my husband and I are debt-free real estate investors. Mm. There is nothing that, this is the part that I, I really want everyone to hear. The financial industry wants you to think it's confusing. They want you to stay in fear for it. There is nothing in wealth building that requires above fifth grade math. We wow. can all do fifth grade math. I can. So, yeah, exactly. So that is the part that I want everyone to hear. You can do fifth grade math. You can build wealth. Yeah. That's what I do is I help break it all down to make it simple so mm. that Let's sit next to me. Let's log into your accounts. Let's figure out where all the expenses are going. Let's figure out where all the income is. And then where's the Delta or where do you want to go to mm. set your GPS for where you want to build your wealth? Yeah. And there's so many paths to get there. And you don't have to select the exact path because you, as we know, life changes. Things mm -hmm. happen. Right. You're a perfect example of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and so many opportunities come along, but as you mentioned earlier, when you're sitting in shame or mm. fear or scarcity, you're not seeing all the opportunities that are mm. available. So what I do is help them help the women see all the opportunities. And mm. that could be a conversation with their partner. I, I love, I love that. I love everything you're saying. And it goes along with everything we know about brain science. It's just like know where you want to be going and then sort of zoom back into like, what is the next right step here? Um, instead of, you know, I know a lot of women often also get thoughts around food. And if they're thinking like, I need to lose 30 pounds, like that may, may seem outrageous and big and, oh my God, how do I ever do that? And then we just get stuck and we don't do anything. And we're just like, or so this idea of like, oh, I need to balance my, checkbook or right? whatever thoughts we're telling ourselves that seem big, I would really like listeners to hear today that Liz is saying, like, we just need fifth grade math. We all can do fifth grade math and that it's not as hard as it seems. It, 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 and I would agree with that. I, I know that our, you know, both of our coaches, um, Brooke Castillo talks about money. It's just a number. Like, it's just a number. It's the meaning that we bring to the number. So if we lose sort of that drama, like say that we have X number of dollars in debt. Like if we lose the drama of what we're making that mean about us and a person and spending, it's like, it's just this number, like whether it's 8,000 or 80,000 or 800, it's like, it's a freaking number. And so what do we do with that number? Or, you know, if we're spending this much a month on Amazon or um, it's so interesting to me too, because I will hear people talk and they're like, I spent so much, like take Amazon as an example. They're like, I spent so much on Amazon last month. And maybe they tell me and they're like, yeah, $120. And I'm like, 
Okay. Like you're thinking that's a lot. Someone else might be like, I spent so much on Amazon last month and it was, you know, $12,000. Like you add a couple more zeros to it. And it's just, again, it's just a thought that we're thinking about it. Or maybe they're thinking, I, you know, I did a really good job last month. I budgeted on Amazon. I almost spent, I only spent $120 would probably be a better example. Like some people being like, that's so much or that's so little, but trying to take the drama and the shame out of it. I think that's really helpful. Um, your guidance there. Well, you just hit the nail on the head though. You have Mm. to have to be on facts. You have Mm. to only focus on the facts. We Mm -hmm. use words with money that are like so much. You just use so much. Mm. Another one that is like, that's ambiguous. What is Mm. so much? Yeah. Enough. I don't have enough. I don't make enough. That word Mm. is not allowed in my program. We do not use the word enough ever. It's like my, I am under earning by $376 and 42 cents. I want, Oh, I love that. It's like you, we need to know exactly. We only work with facts because Mm. that is that whole story of the, the money story. We edit it. We edit it right down Mm -hmm. just facts. So it becomes um, just sentences. And then we decide, do we like those sentences or not? Mm. And then how do we problem solve if that if there is a problem, like if there, if you are coming negative every month, like mm-hmm. if you're not um, earning enough for your ex- current bills or expenses, then how do we solve for that? What mm. do we do? Let's put our amazing problem solving brain to work and let's figure out, let's look at the options because there are so many options. Mm. When you open yourself up and see the expansiveness of the mm. universe, it's like, there's so many options for us to make money. Mm. Let's, we're like, there's only one. Yeah. 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 Well, it's sort of our education system too. They're like fit in this box. This is how you make money. Um, And now, I mean, I know when we both graduated from college, there was no way someone would be like, Hey, you can make money on a computer with your brain. We'd be like, no, not unless you're like in a corporation office building, you know, not sitting in wonderful Oregon by the river. Like, (laughs) are you kidding? Yeah, that out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like you know. Well, anyway, so it is. You're right, and there's so many thoughts that we need to uncover Mm. that are showing up for money that aren't serving us. And so then we get to decide: is it serving us? Try it on, and if it is, then keep it. If it isn't, let's edit it. Yeah, can it shift? So. so we talked a bit about how you get people out of the mindset of like money is hard or I don't know about money. How would you get someone out of the mindset or the thought that like money is bad or like like greedy people, like rich people are greedy or um, that sort of train of thought? Well, that's interesting because that's one of the questions that I use in my uncovering your money story is like mm. rich people are what and then finish complete the sentence. Right. Yeah. And the, the interesting part is, is you get to decide once you've completed that sentence, was that sentence positive or negative? Mm. And that helps you understand whether you're having an abundant mindset or a scarcity mindset. Yeah. Are you repelling money? That is the other thing. If you think rich people are bad or rich people are greedy, you're probably Mm. repelling your wealth. And so we have to uncover that and have awareness around it. So awareness, clarity, vision, maybe you don't want to be rich. Well, okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be. But if you're unhappy with your results right now, <laughs> you're going to have to make a change. Change in your thought line. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I love that. So that's, so um, can we go back to that, that money mindset exercise? Like rich people are, and you have people fill it in, you just sort of, leave it there. I like that a lot. I, I know another thing that Brooke Castillo said is like money makes you more of who you are. And that I really like because I when I initially was thinking about um, money back, you know, I had a wealthy father, but somehow it was always from a scarcity mindset. Like we were always like, there was never enough enough was always our sort of mo. And one of the things I definitely one of the stories he told me was, you know, rich people are greedy and rich people are bad and rich people are they're different than us, you know, and I've been trying to shift that into more like rich people are amazing. Rich people can be generous, rich people can be awesome. And, and that like money makes you more of who you are. I'm sure there are rich people who are greedy and there are rich people who are awesome and there are rich people who are generous. And yeah, most mm. 
people I know are amazing <laughs> because who you do- surround yourself with. Yeah. yeah. And they also do so much good for every community I've ever mm-hmm. lived in. You know, yeah. it's the, that's the wealthy people that lift a lot of, of organizations up. So, well, and this is where I want to pause too to just remind listeners that your brain searches for evidence for what you, where you direct it. So, if you are directing it to look for greedy rich people, you will find them. And your brain is like, oh, let's find greedy rich. But if you're looking and searching for greedy, generous people as Liz is, I'm, I'm sorry, generous, rich people as Liz is, she's like, they're all Susie, because that's where she's directing her brain. So just pay attention to what you're thinking about. You'll find yeah. evidence for it. Yeah. I mean, look at the book of scholarships that are available mm, for college students. Yeah. Someone put money in every one of those scholarships. Yeah. That yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful. That is great. Well, I just, I love it. I love your ability and it just sent, like, you just seem like a really warm, comforting presence to, to help someone who might be feeling more avoidant or scared around money to just sort of break it down and neutralize it as, as what it is. It's just, they're just thoughts. Money is numbers and we can think our thoughts about it. Um, and move forward. Could we switch gears a little and you speak a little, cause I know that you are a mother of, of two successful kids. Like, and I know a lot of my listeners are parents. Um, how would you advise people? Like, what are some steps that people could take if they have kids, you know, between age five and 25 in their home? Oh, well, it's a big span, right? That is a big span, five and 20, yeah, let's say big, like they're yeah, still. Okay. <laughs> well, one thing is I, definitely think um we need to talk about money with our kids Mm -hmm. and we need them to see how much things cost and whether that's them you know we don't balance checkbooks like we used to anymore everything's online you know it's Mm -hmm. different right my kid when my parents were teaching me about money it was like can you balance the checkbook and pay these bills my father Mm -hmm. was so there was always a stack of bills to be paid and um but there's some I do have some three strategies that I think are really great for um, Mm. raising financially independent adult children, because I have successfully done this with my husband and I, the first one is play games with your kids, like uh, play games, like teach them chess, teach Mm. them games that have you thinking ahead, like Mm. the next move after this move, like where, which even like Yahtzee, it's such a good game because it requires math. So that's Mm. the other thing, you know, like just play games so that they are getting comfortable with math and then talking to them during that time about what do you think your next move should be? What do you mm. think the next move that? So that would be my oh, first that's one. Oh, fun. I like that. It's smaller. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. Then the other one that I started doing, oh God, this is back in like 2005, I guess, somewhere in there, 2000s, uh, the 2000s, yeah. early 2000s. Um, Hurricane Katrina happened. I don't mm. know if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Hurricane Katrina and the Red Cross relocated families. Well, they sent this family to Portland, Oregon, where we were living at the time. Mm. And um, I connected with them. And they had two little girls that had nothing, like literally mm. nothing. And the mom, which was so trusting, the mom trusted me after we I had been meeting with them. But the mom trusted me to take the daughter, the oldest daughter out shopping to buy mm. some new clothes. And I told her. Today, we are on a love it mission. You can have anything you love, but if you like it, we're not getting it. Oh, wow. And so I took this. So this is my love it thing. I took her on a mission that we are all in on love it's, but there's no room for like it's. Yeah. I think that is so good for kids to get out of that you know, because we are in a consumer society, you know, like there's consumerism, consumerism, consumerism. Mm -hmm. And if they really love something and it's worth it to them, then that's something that we go for. That's a goal we Mm want to have on our list Mm -hmm. where if it's a like it and maybe it's a like it because your friend has it or something else, then I say, forget those. And I think that's a good lesson for little kids. Oh, I think that's a good lesson for me too. Like, why am I settling for the like it if I want the love it? Like the... Don't yeah. Worry. No yeah. Worry. yeah. And um, so that would be the second one. And the third one is there used to be a show on when I was raising kids. So I'm giving you examples of things that I did with my own kids right. or kids that, um, mentored or sponsored. Um, 
the other one is Rachel Ray used to have this TV mm-hmm. show on, I think it was Travel Channel or something like that. It was like $40 a day. And so one of the spring breaks that our kids had, we didn't travel. And I told the kids, I'll take you to the beach today and we'll go to this little beach town and we're going to have as much fun as we can on $40. Oh, I love it. And to this day, that is still one of my kids' favorite days they ever spent with me. I mean, they will talk about it. It's like we have taken them a helicopter ride. Yeah. <laughs> We've taken them over glaciers in Alaska. I mean, our kids have had a lot of privilege. Yeah. And they talk about how much fun it was to get creative and think of everything we could do for $40. Yeah. And we just, they were negotiating, like there was a pedal car company and it was like, $30 for an hour. They're like, we and won't be able to eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and so my son, who was, I don't know exactly. He was probably 10 or around there. He's like, what if we asked him if we could only do 20 minutes? <laughs> and they said, yes. And so it was Gosh. like, this was the create, when I gave them the opportunity to be creative, mm. we came up with so many things. We had a great day. Yeah. Well, I love that because that brings together like problem solving skills, creative thinking, um, also abundance with my, like, it's just, it's like, okay, this is what we have. How are we going to make it last and have fun with it? Um, Like, like you didn't frame that as in like, okay, we can go to the beach, but we're only going to spend $40. You're like, let's have the most fun ever. And we're going to like it just this sort of competition type thing. I love it. Yeah. And I can't take the credit for that. That was Rachel Ray. Yeah. It's great. I, I I implemented it with my kids and I still do that today. Like literally I could walk into most stores and get whatever I want, but yeah. I love going to a store like TJ Maxx yeah. for example, with $40 cash. And it's like, how much fun can I have in here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love, okay. So you're like kids games. Like, yes, listeners, we can listen to them for kids, but I also love them for adults. I'm like, the love it game is something I'm going to absolutely do uh, 100%. I love this idea of like, I mean, it's almost the weekend here in Australia. I'm like, okay, how can I have, I'm going to a um, waterside market in a town called Kayama that I've never been to. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get $40 cash and like, just have the most fun ever. Like, how can I get a cappuccino with the, you know, oil that I, oh, I'm so excited. Yes, yes, yes. And then playing games. What is the fun about playing games and and just especially, I mean, whether we have kids or not, our midlife brains can continue to use that problem solving muscle. Yay. Those are my, my, my tips. I love, you know, I just, I love empowering kids about money though. Mm. And like other things that we did with our kids, this is, you know, an extra example, but we matched dollar for dollar, whatever they saved for their car. Mm, so I think that was okay. a tremendous investment for us um, because it encouraged my son to go around and ask people if they wanted their lawns mowed, you know? Mm. That, and so not only did he become a little entrepreneur, which he still is, but um, you know, it got, it got him out asking. Mm-hmm. There's like so many skills involved there with him having to open an account. That's one thing. Yeah go knock on a door and ask someone if they want their lawn mode. That's like mm-hmm. a great skill. So what I, uh, yes, like expanding our brain in terms of thinking of all the different ways that we can make money, whether we're kids or adult women, because I have some women that are sort of going through divorces and it's like, oh my God, how are we going to make, like, we aren't, you know, maybe they've been out of the work for, for so many years and they're trying to think of why well, I don't want to fit back into that traditional job. It's like, how can we sort of expand our brain to think of other ways to make money that is exciting. I think another takeaway I'd like the listeners to have is to just start talking about it. I hear you saying talking about it with kids and talking about that's definitely something that I did more of after my divorce that I would say, you know, this is how much I pay for rent. This is how much it costs us about for groceries. Like, you know, no, we can't get those at the time Nike socks that were so... (laughs) popular, <laughs> you know, right now, but we could, you know, if, you, if that's something you love, we can work towards it. But, but starting to talk about it, I also want to encourage women to start talking about it. It is something that I have, I have, I have sons and I hear them talking to their friends, you know, their 20 year old friends about like good investments or, and I, that was not something that's, I also coach 20 year old girls. I do not hear them 
talking about that. They're talking, you know, again, it's this like talking about their weight or talking about other things. And, and I just bringing our focus more to the money and, and no matter our age, like saying like, Hey, I heard about this stock or what can we talk about? Where can we remove the shame of finances so that we are, you know, how about a dare for every listener to bring it up the next time you're at coffee with someone? Like how often do you check your accounts or what's something you do that is, that you think is a, a strong skill of yours around money? Like that's, I mean, we would talk about that with exercise, like, you know, what's a strong, it's, but we don't like, it just seems so taboo with money. And I, yeah, let's bust that stuff through. And one of the, you know, a good intro question there that kind of takes it off of like, what are you doing? Like, is mm. more like, what, how did your parents talk to you about money? Mm, yeah. yeah. So that it's, that's a good intro to start having some of those conversations rather than you know, sharing what you're doing today. Cause that mm -hmm. might feel a little repelling, you know? Yeah. But... Yeah. Well, what was your first job? Tell me about your first job. Right. How much money did you make there? What did you yeah. do with that? that yeah. Or even something, even, I love the generic part too. Like, do you consider yourself a saver or a spender, which is getting a little more vulnerable, but I'm always encouraging my warriors to be vulnerable because that's how we feel closer to people. <laughs> but yes, say the friend that, yeah, like the people you get together with for coffee for the last 10 years and you talk about, you know, your sex drive, like let's talk about, oh, actually I'm a spender and I have a little bit of shame around it. Get it out of the open. They love you. <laughs> that's so good. It's so good. Or, you know, what would you, what would you do if you were giving $10,000 away? Who would yeah. you give to you? Or because then start thinking about, you know, I teach for legacy wealth too. Yeah. But so that now thinking about what about after you, what yeah. do you want to do? And the difference between generational wealth and legacy wealth is generational wealth is most people talk about that generational wealth. Mm. It's like planting one tree. It's like your family tree, you know? Okay. Like, generational wealth is like, I'm, I'm not familiar with like that, me handing it down to my sons. Yes. That would be you and your sons. Well, I teach legacy wealth, which is like you're planting an orchard, not just mm. one tree. It's like you're giving in your community also. You're giving in all different directions. So leaving it to like an orphanage or like, you, okay, I love that. Yeah. So think bigger is what mm -hmm. I want to encourage all women to do is on around money because you, we are so capable. We are absolutely so capable. Oh, for sure. And this is also where like when we can bust through that mindset of like money makes you bad or greedy. It's like, no, money gives you the opportunity to leave money to your favorite orphanages. And I mean, I love, yes, charities, all of that. Thank you. Yes. All right. So, uh, you know, listeners are going to want to follow you and find out more about you. And where can they find Liz? Where, what, where would you direct them if they want to take a next step with the marvelous Liz? Carol. Well, I love the Instagram. I hang out there a lot like you. So that's, um, I'm certainly there. Mindful Money Coaches is okay. our Instagram handle. And then um, my program is called Mindful Money Method. And mm. so we, oh, I walk you through the whole entire method of how to feel calm and confident around finances. That sounds wonderful. And I will have those in the show link so people can head over there and certainly go over on Instagram and tell Liz you found her and share something about money with her. Let's take the stigma away about talking about money. And um, I love yeah, I love it. Thank you so much for coming on today, Liz. We love it. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you for listening to the Love Your Life show. If you want to hear more from Susie and support the show, be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. Also, Leave a review and share this podcast with friends and family. Go get them, Warriors.